Welcome to another Leeds Local History video on the Geography Juice channel. In this episode I will reveal a story I doubt you will have heard before. I have been investigating the lost Benyons Beck in Holbeck, finding out who the Benyons were that the Beck was named after, and how they teamed up with one of Leeds most famous sons to lead the way in the UK flax industry and build the world's first skyscraper. One of the factors encouraging the development of industry in Leeds was the plentiful supply of water provided through the network of becks which flow in towards the centre of the city. This is the Holbeck, flowing through the area of the same name to the south of Leeds city centre. Becks such as this one were responsible for providing water and power to numerous mills and factories along their course, as well as acting as a drain for waste products. The sources of the Holbeck can be traced to higher ground near Tingley, Tong, Farnley and Gildersum on the south and west outskirts of Leeds. Pudsebeck and Tongbeck join and flow through Troydale as Pudsebeck, before changing its name again to Farnleybeck. As it leaves the reservoir at Farnley, it becomes known as Wortleybeck. Near to Gelded Road it is joined by the Millshawbeck bringing in water from Tingley and Farnley. By the time the Becks reached the city centre in the past, they were filthy and from time to time responsible for outbreaks of cholera and typhoid. The council's solution to the insanitary issues of the Becks in Leeds in the 20th century was to cover them over. Here near Gelded Road in Wortley, Low Beck sees the light of day for the last time. When it reappears, over one and a half kilometres away, it will be as the Holbeck, flowing through one of the cradles of the Industrial Revolution. Where Low Beck once cut across the landscape, there is little sign of it today, but look closely and clues to the past still exist. At Brown Lane West we still see the wall of the Low Beck Bridge. Here is the bridge wall in this photograph from 1945 with Low Beck passing under it. Low Beck still passes under here, unnoticed, and continues on through Holbeck, where it was once a major feature. This photo is from 1953 and is a view looking southwest along Low Beck from the end of Domestic Street. In the foreground, the retaining wall of Torbay Place has collapsed into the Beck and the street is roped off. In the background the railway viaduct is clearly visible. Today the viaduct arch is still there, but now the streets have gone and a network of roads pass above the covered beck and through the area. This map of Holbeck in 1847 shows how essential the beck was to the industry in this place. Mills nestle close to the beck to take advantage of the valuable water. Here at the southwestern end of Water Lane, there was a meander and weir. Low beck was split by engineers into the Hall Beck and Benyon's Beck. The Hall Beck would briefly head north before taking a relatively straight course east to join the River Eyre. Benyon's Beck would take a more meandering route further east eventually joining the air closer to Leeds Bridge. There is some debate about which of the two waterways might be the original course. Goits are artificial water channels built to feed mills. It is quite common to see goits constructed to run off sharp meanders, and so it may be argued that Benyon's Beck is a later constructed goit, running off the meander. However, the Holbeck does take a surprisingly straight course and is in places much lower in comparison to the land alongside it. John Marshall built his first flax mill in 1791 on an open patch of undeveloped land alongside the Holbeck and he, or one of his contemporaries, may have been responsible for constructing the Holbeck as a substantial mill goit. In any case, today the meander and connection with Benyon's Beck is now gone. There is no sign of the meander and becks that once flowed here. 
Added to that is the base of one of the arches of the Holbeck Viaduct, which was built in 1882, also takes up part of the site. Benyon's Beck was sealed off at that time, and with the exception of two remaining culverts I will tell you about later, over the last 130 years, Benyon's Beck has been erased from the landscape. During the 20th century, Lowbeck was also redirected as it passed through Holbeck, running in a large culvert through the area and only reappearing at the end of Water Lane. Clearly there must have been some transition as Benyon's Beck was removed, because on this old public works map, it is still shown as a culverted channel, although now taking a straightened course. A footpath still passes above the realigned culvert, passing under and through the railway viaduct. Close to where Low Beck used to split, the culverted Beck reappears as the Hall Beck, having completed its one and a half kilometre journey underground. It will now continue its course in a wide walled channel until it passes through a final culvert and joins the River Eyre. The demise of Benyon's Beck reflected changes in industry, but prior to that he had played a major supporting role in the development of the flax industry in the UK. Benyon's Beck supplied water to both John Marshall's flax mills and Benyon's flax mill, and this was by no coincidence. In fact, Thomas and Benjamin Benyon were brothers and Shrewsbury woollen merchants who went into business with John Marshall in the flax industry in around 1794, making a great success of it. At first the trio suffered misfortune, as a wood-framed flax mill they jointly owned here on Water Lane went up in flames in February 1796. Cloth mills were prone to catching fire, as the factory air was often full of highly flammable fibres. Unfortunately, their insurance only paid out on about half of their loss, leaving them severely out of pocket. The three merchants hoped to avoid this kind of financial setback in future. The will to avoid further misfortune made them open to new construction methods for a more fireproof building. They enlisted the help of structural engineer Charles Bage, who had impressed them with his knowledge of the properties of iron and construction techniques to make use of it. Together, in 1797, they built Ditherington Flax Mill, the world's first ever iron-framed building. The technology that Bage developed makes him a pioneer of what would become modern skyscraper technology. Its highly innovative structure provided a fireproof environment for industrial processes. The world's first skyscraper may have been built in Shrewsbury, but the Leeds connection to it is very strong. The Benyons, Marshall and Beige enjoyed immense success, but even so, Marshall grew increasingly dissatisfied with his minority holding and in 1804 he bought back control. For a while, Marshall and the Benyons and Beige ran parallel businesses in both Leeds and Shrewsbury. In 1802 to 1803, Benyons and Beige built the steam-powered flax spinning mill known as Benyons Mill, with water supplied by the Beck bearing their name. The multi-storied mill, warehouse and hand heckling block were the first fireproof textile mill buildings in Yorkshire. Later additions included a gas plant in around 1815. This photograph, taken inside Benyon's mill, shows similar cast iron framework and brick vaulted ceilings to that used in Ditherington mill and which helped to reduce the risk from fire. In this picture, Fish belly beams and upright columns can be seen supporting the floors above. The use of iron in buildings was still developing. Fish belly beams were so called because their extraordinary construction stuck out from the ceiling like the belly of a fish. Sadly, 
Benyon Mills, later known as Holbeck Mills, was demolished in 1953. Today the location of the mills is taken over by a hotel and apartment buildings. In its heyday, Benyon's Beck would continue on, after Benyon's Mill, serving even more mills as it meandered its way across Wilson Street, later known as Great Wilson Street, and on by Meadow Lane, heading for the River Eyre before Leeds Bridge. Today there is only the slightest evidence that Benyon's Beck ever existed. Two culverts of the Benyon's Beck remain, unseen, hidden underground, but still monitored by Leeds Public Works. One passes under buildings close to Victoria Road. The other is near to Meadow Lane. The culvert that joins the air today probably follows the original course, where the Beck joined the river. This was redirected slightly in the 1800s, so that the Beck joined the river slightly further upstream. In the 1900s the Beck was redirected even further upstream, joining the air close to where the whole Beck meets the river. This is the point where the Beck originally met the river. Today, steel defences support the banks and any visible clues are gone. But there are still some small visible remnants of Benyon's Beck here on the banks of the River Eyre. This is the point where it was first redirected in the 1800s, close to the new footbridge across the river. A small outflow pipe marks the spot. Here is the outflow from the 1900s, today covered by a sluice. They are almost anonymous little reminders of a once important little beck that played its part in the development of an industry and the city of Leeds. Sadly, Benyon's Mills and Benyon's Beck have almost completely gone from the Leeds landscape, but some of Marshall's later mills do still remain and are a majestic reminder of the past. Recent regeneration of Holbeck has helped to conserve them, and the story of Holbeck is increasingly told. This video set out to draw light on the role of Benyon's Beck and its place in the amazing story of industrial development in Holbeck. Hopefully it has done that. If you have enjoyed this video, do subscribe. There are many more Leeds Local History videos on the Geography Juice channel. Thank you for watching.